Hey, this is Chris at Talon Gaming. Today we're looking at a game developed by Cold Iron Studios, published by Focus Home Interactive, released in August of 2021, Aliens Fireteam Elite. Available for the PS4, PS5, Xbox Series S and X, Xbox One, and Windows PC, Aliens Fireteam Elite is a co-op, third-person survival shooter. The game takes place 20 years after the initial Aliens movies. Based off of the UAS Endeavour, you'll be tasked with extricating a scientist aboard the derelict Katanga Orbital Refinery, searching for survivors of Palace Station, investigating a magnetic anomaly on the planet's surface, and then fighting to destroy the Xenomorph Hive. The game implements Left 4 Dead style gameplay with the Gears of War like cover system. Early DLC includes skin and visual type items, while the first season pass currently includes four new weapons, skins and a whole new character class, the Phalanx, a riot shield yielding shock pulse specialist. PC requirements aren't too crazy, but you will need at least a quad core CPU, a GTX 760 or R9 285 at a minimum while a GTX 1060 or RX 480 are recommended for 1080p 60fps gaming at high fidelity. You'll also require 30 gigs of free storage. Storyline combat missions consist of three unit fire teams through four campaigns of three missions, covering a range of different objectives through a variety of scenery. Once you've completed the campaigns, you'll unlock Horde Mode, where you face wave after wave of Xenomorphs that progressively get more difficult. You'll even earn credits in which you can purchase consumables to use during the fight. Missions consist of traveling on foot to your objective through intense combat while also activating equipment, bypassing locks and security systems and so on. During the mission you'll find ammo drops, health packs and equipment crates to help you along the way. At several times during each mission you'll be given a prepare to battle message and need to organize a defense for your area until you're able to move on to the next objective or extract from the area of operations. If you look off the beaten path during missions, you'll occasionally run into hidden equipment caches and intel that provide additional backstory. Enemies are plentiful throughout the game with over 20 types to train your guns on. You'll see everything from face huggers, runners, security scents, drones, and even a queen. There are four character classes initially available, with recon unlocking upon completing the campaign. The first free season pass expansion is already added to sixth. Each class has its own unique, active and passive abilities as well as weapon specialties. With every completed mission, your character will gain experience points and eventually level up. Weapons used will also level up, improving some attributes such as accuracy, fire rate and stability. Additionally, each character class will also independently gain experience, unlocking perks and the ability to utilize them. The perk system is a fun and unique way of upgrading and adapting your character's attributes and abilities to your style of play. Each character class will unlock perks as they level up, some of which can be shared with other character classes. As you level up, you'll earn more space to further expand your abilities. Fireteam Elite offers over 30 weapons and 70 attachments, with more being added through updates. Each weapon has its own unique style and attribute set, and you'll find everything from single, burst and automatic pistols, carbines and rifles, to sniper rifles, grenade launchers and even flamethrowers. Combat rating is a game mechanic that rates a character's combat prowess. By totaling up the character, class and weapon level, as well as attachments and perks, it provides a score that shows what you should be capable of. Each campaign mission has a suggested minimum combat rating, which rises as you progress through the game. If you've got a Waylon, you Consumables are items that can be used during combat operations and can be found during gameplay or purchased aboard the Endeavour. These include items such as incendiary ammunition, sentry guns and any personnel mines. Challenge cards are a way of spicing up the game a little. Most cards will inhibit the fire team in one fashion or another in exchange for an increased completion bonus. Some cards on the other hand will make your weapons more powerful or grant you more health but in return negate any bonuses. When you start the game you'll be able to customize the look of your character. You'll also be able to personalize the paint scheme of weapons, add logos, wear different types of armor, headgear and more. And last but not least, tactical opportunities, which give both daily and weekly challenges with a nice payout for completion to help keep things interesting and fresh. Textures and animations are quite impressive. While they're not perfect and I have seen better, the game really does look good and doesn't undersell the experience. The HUD and menu overlays are quite nice outside of the fact that they move as you move the cursor. I find that a little off-putting. Cutscenes are mostly non-existent, but the few in-mission scenes that play out are really well done. 
One thing I will complain about though is the lack of mouth movement during speech. It's odd listening to a character talk with a static face and no facial expressions whatsoever. It's just weird. Xenomorphs and other sound effects and atmosphere are very well done. The sound of rampaging pulse rifles, beeping motion sensors, and screaming Xenos always makes for a great day. Combined with the appropriately paced music, it all brings back the feeling of the original movies. And to top it off, voice acting isn't bad at all and fits the game quite well. Last one, then we focus on the big anomaly. The story intertwines itself within the movie lore. You hear mentions of the characters and stories from both the original and the newer movies. There's a fair bit of scenery and various dialogue dedicated to furthering the story, and while the game itself is fairly short, it does give you enough to visualize the game as a worthy extension of the franchise. Controls are well laid out, a typical WSAD setup with actions and abilities nearby for easy access on PC. You can also control the game quite easily with a gamepad. The game is extremely fun to play, right from the first mission onward, it really seems to let you settle in and succeed by not letting you feel overwhelmed right off the bat while also providing you with a bit of a challenge. As you progress through the game, the missions get significantly more difficult, with the recommended combat rating going from 150 to over 600. The game expects you to have to work at it, at least to some extent. The difficulty system here ranges from casual, standard, intense, extreme, and insane. Standard isn't going to be very difficult for anyone who plays shooters regularly, but must be completed to unlock the more difficult levels. From this point onward, friendly fire isn't, as you start to take damage. The intense difficulty was a solid challenge and not a mere walk in the park, and while I haven't tried insane, the extreme difficulty level was genuinely difficult, even from the very first mission. If you're not careful, you'll be overwhelmed quite quickly. The game features online matchmaking to help build your fire teams. You can play with randoms or with friends. I'll mention here that there's no chat or voice systems enabled in the game. I should also note that it's recommended to play with real players rather than AI teammates once past the standard difficulty level as they aren't particularly helpful. I think the average gamer will take anywhere between 10 and 12 hours to complete the campaign before moving on to face the horde and higher difficulties. For me, after 40 hours of gameplay, I had fully completed the campaign using three of the four base classes as well as once on the intense difficulty level. The game hasn't really worn off on me yet and is still quite fun and enjoyable. I would, however, love to see more missions added to the base game or through DLC content. As a whole, the game just breeds nostalgia for the movies and has made me a happy camper. The aliens, then the pulse rifles, and the constant action, and while the game isn't perfect by any measure, everything presented is more than enough to wear a big fat grin. Fans of third person shooters, aliens movies, or who just love to run and gun are really going to love this one. I know I do. As always, thanks for watching everyone. If you watched this far, don't forget to like, comment, and consider subscribing. It's free. For more content just like this. This is Chris from Talent Gaming, signing out.